Today, I'm gonna decide which is the best action figure Halo Mega Blocks or Mega Constructs. Let's put them to the test. Alrighty then, welcome to the studio. Behind these cases are a single Mega Blocks and Mega Constructs figure, and we're going to compare them. Each time, we're gonna award them a cute little badge if I decide that they are the favorite. So I thought a perfect figure set to be focusing on for the beginning of this series is Halo Universe Series 3. This is basically a celebration of what came before, you know, talking to the designers. They took a lot of inspiration from the past. They did a fan survey where fans chose what figures they wanted to return. And this just seemed like the perfect one to compare because there's a lot of similar figures. Inside, we have the Elite Miner. This is from Halo 2 anniversary and is just one of my absolute favorite figures these days. I don't know if this is gonna win. You're gonna have to find out when we see the elites face off against each other. But if we check out inside, we've got a little instruction manual. Basically, you can give one point to Mega Blocks or one point to Mega Constructs if you think they have the better figure. And let me know which figures you awarded what points to at the end. The first figures behind door number one are the Black CQBs. This is a great place to start. I had an interview with Kevin from from Mega last July, and he said that this was literally pulled, the colors were pulled from the original figure. I thought, why not start here? So these are two different Spartan lasers. I guess we'll start with the weapons. These actually look so sick next to each other. This is one of the original Spartan lasers, and it was totally reimagined in this blind bag. It's actually super rare to get a painted weapon in a blind bag, but they really wanted to pull out all the stops. The CQB is maybe a poor choice to go with because it's such a bulky figure. It's gonna be very hard to hold that Spartan laser in any kind of realistic pose anyway, but it is still cool to see two handles. It's a way more formed and fitted design, well, a bit more intricate details, I would find. Mega, they did the transition from old articulation to new articulation pretty much around the time of the Mattel merger when Mattel purchased Mega Blocks. They were an independent company out of Montreal and the Mattel office in San Francisco purchased them. We saw a lot of changes at that time. Of course, the main thing is the ball joint. This is super simple and obviously limits articulation greatly. But one of the things that Mega Blocks figures always had in some ways better than Mega Constructs figures is the paint applications on the armor. This you can't see as many differences because it is a very simple figure. And some people, I saw actually someone criticize me online saying, oh, it's not a fair comparison because the visor on this is really poorly applied. Brother, let me tell you, the visor on this figure is always quite poorly applied. <laughs> It just doesn't seem to stretch to the far edges of the helmet. I actually much prefer the helmet on the new figure. But there are plenty of times where you can see the paint applications shine through. Look at these elbows. It's hard to see on camera, but they have little gray highlights that are painted on. You can also see on this knife, there is a gray strip where this is just a plain solid black. Look at those paint apps on the helmet. You can see so much more applied to that helmet than this one. Sometimes you have a figure that has far more paint apps because it's from a rare set, but these are just two blind bag figures. This actually came out in a series seven blind bags and then again in the Ultimate Collectors pack. So it was clearly a fan favorite for Mega to reintroduce because this is the first new articulation CQB. The way the gray undersuit works up to the peg hole kind of does seem nicer than this. For the first choice, I'm gonna have to go with the new articulation CQB to win the prize. I know this one is awesome, super nostalgic. CQB is meant to be a close quarter specialist. But you just can't really achieve that with old articulation. I'm gonna award first place of this round to the Spartan CQB new articulation. Moving on to round two and we're bringing in some enemies now. We've got the classic purple brute. So this has so much history behind it. And Kevin said that this new brute was a direct nod to the original, the OG founding father of the brutes, of the monkey boys. I was never that much of a fan of the peg in the back here. I understand, I mean, it is to attach in so he can have it slung round his belt. I used to cut these off the same with the rocket launcher all the time, like literally just cut it straight off. This is an absolutely gorgeous, sleek design, even more detail. You can't really knock it. It's even got like little etched battle damage marks from every time it's taken out a Spartan's armor or something similar. It's got a lot of love in this brute shot. How can you judge these side by side when realistically a lot of the themes we're gonna go back and forth to is paint apps with OG figures versus the insane level of detail you can get on that face. I love it. And interestingly, they chose to have a fitted headpiece 
case for this. Like usually you would have a helmet that inserts on top, but realistically they couldn't achieve the same level of detail with all of this hair. For me, there is an obvious winner here because a lot of new articulation figures, they do have a lot of good paint apps, but this is pretty bare bones. And if we're talking about a high quality figure that sort of will last the test of time, I don't feel like this one will as much. It kind of feels bare bones, honestly. In terms of paint apps, it's totally bare bones. I do enjoy the fact that this is a rubbery piece. It's really hard to make the decision, but if you look at this, right? And this is an old figure, so it's got some damage to it. It's been scratched, but it's 15 years old, leave it alone. Insane detail on that belt. Those blue lights look so good. And a lot of original Megablox figures were hand painted, right? Like I believe they were. Sort of rugged paintbrush effect showing his fur. Even those eyes. Now Mega, they went to the sort of hole in the eyes, the hole in the head design. Probably at the very start of new articulation, it probably was. That was because these kind of paint applications are actually really hard to do. It's still looks way better in terms of a brute. Maybe on a human, it looks a bit scary sometimes, but on a brute, it looks menacing. It looks like you just caught his eyes in a headlights and he's about to charge at you. I think the obvious choice here goes to the original Mega Bloks brute. There's something about the absolute level of detail from a figure that is 15 years old. The fact that it has been able to stand the test of time like that definitely deserves an award from me. So we are currently on one all, as you say, in Britain. We are moving on to another UNSC support. We've got the classic Chips Dubo in all of its glory. These are really special figures, both of them. This Chips has actually been released twice now, one in the Clash on the Ring blind bags and one now. And it was re-released because it is such a fan favorite figure and one that people want to army build the absolute high heaven out of more than really any other mega constructs marine. This is the original Halo Fest CE Marine. Now the Halo Fest blind bags, there were four variant figures. C Marine, Chief, Elite, and the Chase AC Jackal. This originally came with a Magnum and the monstrously large shotgun that was in the original range. But today we're gonna compare the weapons side by side of what we have with the blind bag figure, which is the assault rifle. I personally really like the super condensed down assault rifle. It doesn't really seem as menacing. It doesn't seem like it would pack as much of a punch against your banish adversaries, but it does seem like a really dope condensed down version. This figure here is one of the best paint app figures I know of. I love this wash. Now, do you think this wash is too much? Some would, but this is Chips Dubo, right? He crash landed on an alien ring. There was a parasite unleashed and the Covenant was trying to cleanse them off the installation. You don't think your armor would look like this? That looks like it was legitimately just painted straight on. The paint applications, whether they were hand or machine painted, they all look different, like every figure looked different, but I just love how filthy this guy is. Like he's been crawling through the mud, fighting off combat forms for months now. He's sick and tired of it. So you have obviously good washes, which are essential to a figure, which Mega Constructs really does lack in. And then you have good marbling, right? So marbling is a process very loosely described when you have different plastics that melt at different temperatures and rates. When you forge them all together in the injection mold process, they can cool and sort of solidify in really interesting ways. So there will be no other helmet like this on planet Earth. That is a unique piece because of how the marbling has chosen to set in that specific helmet. You can see marbling going back Back as far as Mega Bloks goes back, you know, the original pieces, a lot of the original marketing for these toys was that they had this really interesting marbling effect. And that is nice to see that it carried through to these figures. I don't know the ins and outs of it. Why Mega can't have good washes like this? Perhaps it did cost a lot more to have, you know, hand painted assets like this one, but honestly, there's something missing. There's some lack of level of like dirt and grime that this guy has. He looks like he's fresh out of the factory and for dioramas, for collecting, that doesn't really vibe with me as well. Although this is a really good figure, this head has been used so many times that it kind of starts to lose the effect. You do get that slight extra level of expression and even that eyebrow is painted, like that's pretty crazy. Based on a lot of those reasons and based on this incredible muddy dirty wash, I am going to award the third point to my CE Chips Dubo. Moving on to round four, we've got Mega Blocks, Mega Constructs, which one's it gonna be? The Elite. Now, this is an Elite Miner. We've got a Halo 2 Anniversary Elite, which is just 
one of my absolute favorite figures ever, so <laughs> maybe that's a bit of a spoiler. The original Elite looked a little like this, and then they upgraded it, I think more in line with like Halo 2, Halo 3, but I'm sure the lore experts could tell me the difference. Way more menacing of a figure. Like, this is fun, this is nostalgic, but this is something that you do not want to face on the battlefield. Mega really did channel a lot of that when they brought the Elite back. Maybe it could have done with some red eyes, you know, we're actually seeing less and less like painted eyes on Mega figures, which is a bit of a shame. Oh boy, there is a big change here. So they were rocking this original big boy, this chonky boy for uh, about 14 years, maybe 13 years, because it didn't come with the original lineup. So maybe, maybe 12, 13 years. And when they announced that they were doing this, the community celebrated. This is a really great place for me to go to, right? Because up until this point, I've been quite critical of new articulation for paint apps, but they, put their money here, I guess. Beautiful black application on this helmet, right the way along, a massive piece. That's eight different paint apps on the chest alone. We also have the addition of elite hands, just two fingers and a thumb, I guess if you want to call it that. I think that this is, is a way better representation of what an elite actually is, like they do look like that frightening long necked Sangheili in the games and the uh, extended universe. Not quite clear what is the helmet and what's not. I mean, it is, but it also kind of isn't. It's just black skin. Contrary to that, you have the black undersuit on this one, and then you also have the gray skin showing on the hands and neck. And you know, that does feel a lot more like it is an elite inside a jumpsuit with armor. My clear choice here has to be this anniversary elite. These are just soaked in nostalgia but they don't quite capture the menacing large scale of the Elite quite like this does. And I know a lot of people have been critical on the height of the Brute, that the Brute should be taller. Mega said that they want the Brutes to be able to fit in all of the vehicles alongside other characters. But yeah, this Elite I think is a perfect encapsulation of what a Elite from Halo 2 Anniversary should be. So for that reason, it gets my vote. We are neck and neck as we enter round five, and this is where it gets interesting because how can I choose between my favorite little squishy guys? This is Billy the Grunt. Well, these are classic Billy the Grunts. All three of really the sizes that Grunts ever came in. So the original ones were teeny tiny little guys that could barely hold a needler. They look so cute. Um, I don't even know which one this came from. This was from the Battlescape 1, I think. This from a random combat unit or blind bag. First of all, I think most people, particularly when these were out, didn't realize how big Grunts actually were in game. Like they are massive. So this is a more visual representation of a Grunt. Most Grunts don't have a whole necessary there, but I know that you just have one mold for everything. Like, I would love to be able to have an elite that was just a helmetless elite, but they always have that head. Way more realistic grunt, way more flexibility with those ball joints. Like, a lot of Spartans can kind of get away with old articulation, but these ones literally just moved up and down. There was nothing else you could do with them. It was still so cute. It's so hard to be a, at all critical of my little squishy boys. And these had painted eyes. I really, dislike the fact that these grunts don't have painted eyes. Now, of course, we're comparing grunts from different price sets. This is from a Battlescape, but I don't really think back then that that actually made a difference. I think they just had painted eyes. This grunt obviously has the horror of his bare face. Look at that. Oh my goodness. The pack is awesome. The design is really, really great. But the paint apps on these do give it a lot of points. I think ultimately, if you're talking about uh, Mega Constructs, which is built to be played with, built to be posed on dioramas, it is built to have like accessibility. Obviously these ball joints are so much better. They add so many more points and while this could do with more paint apps. I know it's a cheap blind bag figure. For a long time, they had six blind bag figures exclusively and they upped it back to eight for this series. They added the Chips Dubo and the Grunt and their justification was they were already re-releasing figures so they didn't really need to, like they, they weren't high cost production value. So I can give it a little bit of a pass. I do know that a lot of Grunts do have painted eyes and just based on how lifelike, how cute and little, look, you can have him look, he looks like he's just sleeping in a cave. I gotta give my point to the classic orange grunt, Billy the Grunt. He just holds a special place in my heart. Mega Constructs has just pulled into the lead with three points against Mega Bloks 2. Let's see if Mega Bloks can pull it back with the next figure. We've got, oh, 
an empty display box. I must have forgot to put the figures in. Just kidding, they're the AC Elite. So this one, I thought it was only fit and proper that I had the two AC Elites from two blind bag series side by side. And ironically, this is from Halo Universe Series 3 blind bags. This is from Series 3 blind bags. So that's pretty cool to have them side by side, both from the third iteration of a blind bag series. I had to be taken back to the days of Halo Mega Block Series 3. What a gorgeous series. That Elite looking so epic behind all of these characters. There are a couple of things to talk about here. First of all, it's a hard thing to compare because they are literally just AC see-through versions of figures that already exist. This Elite is a direct rip of the original Elite that we showed off earlier. It's dope that we got a Jager Adomni and as Mega put it in one of my interviews, you can kind of see this as the first appearance Jager Adomni because the first time you see him, he's AC. An issue you do have with original Halo Mega Bloks, translucent figures, transparent figures, they do yellow slightly over time. There's a lot of science behind it, but I think a lot of mine have yellowed because they've been in storage in the attic or the loft for you Americans, going between hot and cold temperatures all throughout the year. But you can clearly see that the uh, yellow Elite, it's just not see-through anymore. Can I pass judgment? Because technically this one could become like that in 15 years. Mega have always said their plastic quality has improved over time. Based on the fact that they re-released the same energy sword back into this set and that these are just direct copies of existing figures. In an absolutely wild twist that nobody saw coming, I am awarding both of these first place for this round. They just hold the exact same weight. They are both epic AC iterations of classic elite design. It looks like Mega Constructs is still keeping their lead for now. Let's see what happens when we pull open this iconic set here. Now, these are not the same figure, obviously. We have a Helljumper from Halo 5 Guardians, and we have a original Spartan Recon. I thought these were pretty similar figures. They both got that like nice metallic green shine. They've got the exact same Hydra, more or less, so that is a bit of a mute point. But we're gonna talk about the figures. In Mega Constructs, in Mega Blocks, the most important thing is Spartans. They always have been the absolute staple bread and butter of this franchise of Halo in general, but of Mega Bloks. Like, they've always prided themselves on the number of reiterations of classic Spartans over the years. They've just produced hundreds, if not thousands at this point, and it is incredible to see side by side how far they've come. This green Spartan would have been released in about 2010 or 11, probably 2011. I don't have the set in front of me, but I'll put it on the screen. It's been a while since they've re-released it and a long time coming, it's now in metallic green. There is a slight error on the paint application, uh, the visor above there, but uh, you know, we can't really hold them that accountable for that. This is a really difficult decision because Mega Constructs, Mega Blocks is all about Spartans. It's all about making your iconic Spartan in block form. So I want the one that's bulked out, that looks the most menacing, that looks like it was ripped straight from the game. But at the same time, I do want one that, you know, looks like it's seen some battle and that's the problem that I came to with the Chips Dubo. This has no wash whatsoever. And I think you really did start to feel that when Mega Constructs Halo started doing new articulation and all of the Spartan fire teams were just basic uh, colors. They didn't have washes at all. And this one, my goodness, the wash is phenomenal. And can you even count the number of black paint apps on this figure? There is literally dozens and dozens. Even on the helmet, that is so highly detailed. And that has to be taken into consideration a lot when we're putting these side by side. Even though this Hell Jumper clearly looks the most epic and Spartan like, this just looks remarkably cool. And there is a problem, which you might have spotted on the camera already. This has been a problem that I've seen since back in the EOD Armory pack. It's kind of crazy to me that it's not been fixed up until this point. And that is the fact that for some reason, uh, the kinds of plastic used, I would imagine, the forearms and the helmet of these metallic green figures are simply just a different color. They are a totally different color and they always have been. And I'm so sorry if you've never noticed because once you notice, you will always <laughs> notice. And I'm so sorry. It's just something that has never been fixed. With trepidation and hesitation, I'm kind of gonna have to reward this point 
to the Mega Bloks Recon. It is iconic, it is classic and retro, but the paint apps, the washes, look at this. We're talking, this is 12, 13 years older than this. I have to give the point to the Mega Bloks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we reach the final round and the stage is set for the final decision. Mega Bloks versus Mega Constructs. Now, we are currently neck and neck and the fate of the universe hangs in the balance. So let's bring in our final figure. Now, any of the eagle-eyed Chad viewers out there will know what the last figure is. I could barely fit these into the cabinets. It's the best of the best, the Flood. Okay, so this is a really hard decision. First of all, there is no Flood Brute in Mega Bloks form. They never released one. I decided to do a pop and swap and compare what a Flood Brute would look like. Because let's be honest, Mega Bloks is pop and swaps. It doesn't have to be the actual release. It's what tools were released to you to make your own character. So that's what I've done. I've made the Flood Brute and we're gonna compare them side by side. But really, how can you compare them? Here is the claw for our Flood Brute. It is on a basic ball joint. Its articulation is quite poor. You know, the articulation on a lot of these ball joints. And this is about all it can do. Now, the Flood Brute tentacle here, the arm. Oh man, we're talking one, two, three, four ball joints, all independent of each other, giving the most gruesome movement possible. Even that claw in the center, you know, they've clearly borrowed a lot of design from the original one. I bet they had a field day actually putting this into sort of actual final design. And this flood head is from the Marine, so it doesn't actually have a flood face, but oh, absolute stuff of nightmares. Look at the tentacle pops in and out, I think is a stroke of genius from the design team. But yes, it could do with more washes. Like look at the level of wash on this. It adds so much more texture than this plain sort of arm here. It's got some of that marbling effect in it, but not really. And it is hard to judge because this is one molded torso piece. This is just a brute with the flood. But then again, that's exactly what it was. There was just, you would slap that on anything. So it is still an accurate sort of comparison of the times and how they've changed. I think you already know what my decision is. While this is an epic flood brute and you can see it sort of rah, dragging its body along the floor. It just can't compare to this insane Flood Brute. One of the best figures, sort of peak final form for Mega. They can't achieve much better than this unless they add some better paint apps, which I hope they might do in the future. But when all is said and done, we have got our victor. Eight Mega Bloks and Mega Constructs figures have battled it out for the right to be the greatest figures. And I think the judging has been pretty fair. I've taken everything into consideration and obviously the passage of time is a big one. These things, they hold such nostalgic places in your heart. And I look forward to the day when Mega Constructs figures are viewed as nostalgic the same way Mega Blocks figures are, because believe me, the day shall come. I'm running out of space here. There's so many amazing figures to display. I hope you enjoyed this Mega Blocks, Mega Constructs versus episode. The final score is four points for Mega Blocks and five points for Mega Constructs. They win this episode, but will they win the next? We'll find out soon. ACJ Gradomni is signing off.